I wanted to post a solution to a problem you may have encountered with hubs if you have complex terrain, which is that when you're walking, you can sometimes walk through a thing and, and you're not sticking to the ground plane. You're not uh, being able to navigate over the top of these hills and things like that. So in my case, what I have is here in Mozilla Spoke, I've got this hilly terrain and uh, you know I've set it to walkable and then this floor plan element should generate the proper geometry for my path but uh, it wasn't doing that and I'll show a picture of what that looked like but everything was off and, and you couldn't walk on that ground plane. So what I did is I brought it into Blender here and Blender is a free 3D program. You can see this is a pretty complex mesh, uh, but that makes it hard for Spoke to automatically calibrate and calculate everything that should be a collidable, walkable surface. So what you need to do in those instances is to simplify your mesh. So there's a few things we need to do in setup to make sure that we can do everything we need to do. Now, first thing is to go to add-ons. We're going to look for this F2 mesh and we want to select that. That's going to help us fill out the new mesh that we're building for this topology. The next thing we want to do is up here in our filters, we want to make sure that selectable is triggered as an option and now in all of our layers anything that's this solid arrow is selectable and you can see my landscape I've made it not selectable. So I'm going to build my new mesh from a plane. I'm just going to start with a plane and I currently can't see that plane so what I want to do is make my landscape here see-through. So over in the shading in the upper right, if I turn on x-ray mode and scale that down, I can control how see-through my mesh is. Obviously this needs to be much bigger. So we're not gonna cover the whole surface. This is gonna be just a slice of the overall mesh. Next thing we wanna do is go into edit mode for this geometry, which is tab and we want to turn on snapping. And then in this drop down menu, we can choose what we want to snap to. I'm going to turn in all of those things. And then we're going to turn on project individual elements. Now there's a couple of keystrokes I'm going to be using a lot, so you should familiarize yourself with those if you don't know them already. The first is W, which is changing my selection modes here. Most of the time I'm going to be in this tweak mode. The other is we want to be able to toggle what part of the plane we're selecting. We might sometimes want to be selecting a vertex, so one corner. Sometimes we might want to be selecting an edge. And the way that you toggle between those is one or two. So now if I were to go into vertex selection, and select a vertices and drag it to a corner you can see it'll kind of snap in place here and it's sort of following this topology you can see these lines coming through here which are the curves of the mesh below it now the one thing we want to do is in our viewport display for this plane make sure that we're selecting in front and that will display it always above the mesh below it now we're going to want to give this plane a material that doesn't look exactly like the mesh below it. So we're currently in the object properties panel. We want to switch to the materials panel, which is down here. And we want to give it a new material. We want to change it down in viewport display. So you can pick any color, just make sure it's distinct. And now the last thing we want to do is add a modifier. So that's this wrench icon here.
and the modifier that we want is shrink wrap. We want to make sure all of these are selected. And for a target, we want to select our landscape. So just momentarily, I'm going to make it selectable again. And I click here, and my landscape is selectable. Now, you can see that it's warping itself to the landscape. And if I wanted to adjust, you can see it's somewhat disappeared. If I wanted to adjust the height to make sure that it was clearly above the mesh, I could do that here, but I'm just going to leave that at zero. Okay, we're ready to build our mesh over this topology. I'm going to switch to edge mode. I'm going to select an edge here, and I'm going to show you a few different techniques you can use to build out your mesh. So one is to, once you have this edge selected, control and right click. And each time you do that, it's creating a new quad, and that quad is following the contours of the mesh below it in a rough approximation. Now if you want more control over where these things go, you can select an edge and hit the E key, and then you can move your mouse and place the next edge wherever you want it to go. If I want, I can choose multiple edges. And I can use that technique with the control right click as well. Now at some point, you're going to want to close off some of these vertices. So I'm going to switch to vertex mode. I'm going to select these two different vertices here. And I'm going to hit the M key to merge. And you have a few different options. Usually I'll choose at center. And that's going to bring all these vertices together to close up the holes in my mesh. Now because I've done that, I realized something that we need to enable. You can tell that this wrapper for the mesh isn't matching up with the purple shading below it, and that's because we haven't selected the on cage for the shrink wrap modifier. And now that we've done that, I can see that a few of these uh, vertices are a little bit off. So I'm actually just going to delete that vertex, which is X. I'm going to delete this one here. We don't want vertices sitting underneath other vertices. So our options are to move them or delete them. So this one I've moved, and you can see we've got this hole here. If I want to close that up, I can switch to edge mode, select these edges, and hit F, and that will fill it. I'm going to go ahead and just speed through making a bunch more of these quads to cover my texture. And this is what it roughly looks like when we're all done. So when you've got something you're satisfied with, what you want to do is export it as a GLB, give it a name, and what I would do is just choose selected objects and make sure this plane is selected. We don't need any of the animation. We don't need skinning. And you can click export. And now in hubs, I've imported this walkable hill as an asset. This is the mesh that I've made and it's, you know, you can tell it's pretty close. You can see it's kind of popping up above the original path in some places and a little bit below, but it's a pretty close approximation. You won't probably notice it when you're walking around the scene. And we don't need to see it. We do want to see the hill path asset here. 
the textured asset. Uh, but this one should not be walkable, and this one should. And once we've done that, you want to have this floor plan asset in your scene, and you want to click Regenerate, and it should match up with the textured asset, more or less. It's gonna, it's gonna give you a good indication. These yellow cross-hatched lines here. What is the walkable, collidable surface in your hub scene? So let's test it out. This is my hub scene as a viewer would view it in hubs versus in spoke. I'm just going to enter this room here. And if I walk around, you can see I'm not falling through the floor. I'm climbing up this hill. I'm coming back down. So we've generated a valid usable floor plan. Hope this helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions.